We're going to talk about overcomers today. Because the Bible says in the book of Romans that we are overcomers in this life. It says that we are more than conquerors. And that's a statement of who we really are. It doesn't say we are overcomers if everything goes right. It doesn't say we are overcomers if all circumstances are favorable. It says you are overcomers, period, regardless of the circumstances. So to, today we want to talk about how to be an overcomer. I want you to understand today that in life things can get tough. That's just a part of life. You know what's amazing? Sometimes it seems like people get surprised when things happen. You should, you should never be surprised by a storm. You know why you shouldn't be surprised by a storm? Because Jesus said, in this world you have tribulation. So in this world things get tough sometimes. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Life is not easy. Life is good, but it's not easy. Life is good, but it's not easy. It's not easy for anyone. You know, sometimes we have people who are the, under the illusion that there's some people in the world who have life easy. And they think that because you have money, you have life easy. But we have seen circumstances over the years that prove over and over again that money does not make your life easy. Just the other day, we had the, the, the famous artist Prince died of an overdose of drugs. People have money and fame, but money and fame does not make life easy. So life is tough. Jesus did say, he said, in this world you have tribulation and that applies to everybody. He didn't say, you're going to have tribulation if you do something or if you don't do something. He was talking to his disciples. His disciples were following him and he said to them, he said, in this world you're going to have tribulation. So we have to realize that tribulation is a part of the world. As long as you're here, you're going to have tribulation. If you don't have any tribulation, check to see if you're still here. And tribulation comes in all kinds. Sometimes you have a physical storm. Sometimes you have a financial storm. Tribulation comes from all directions. And Satan is, is good at inventing new types of tribulations for you in case the last one wasn't good enough for you. He will create something new. But Jesus made some statements that I want you to be aware of. And there's some powerful statements that we miss sometimes. He said, you'll have tribulation. And in John chapter 16, verse 33, he, he said it like this. He said, these things I have spoken unto you. Unto you that in me you might have peace. Everybody say that with me. Say, in me you might have peace. Now he's addressing the disciples. He's preparing them for when he leaves. And he says to them, he says, look, I want you to understand. I'm saying these things to you. Before he tells them what he's going to say, he said, let me tell you why I'm saying it. He said, these things I have spoken unto you spoken unto you that in me you might have peace. So he knew ahead of time that there was some tribulation coming that would cause them to lose their peace. So he, he prepared the, 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 the way already. He said, look, I want you to know this so that you can have peace. And he's saying that to us today. He's saying, I want you to understand some things so that you can have peace. And he says, he says, in the world you shall, no, no, in the world you might have tribulation. Now he is talking to the disciples. The disciples are his ambassadors in the earth. And he is giving them a briefing before he leaves. And he says, in the world you shall have tribulation. So tribulation will be here as long as you are alive. Get used to it. Never like it or appreciate it, but get used to it. He says, but. Everybody say but. The buts in the Bible are so important. You got to understand what comes after the but. It says, but be of good cheer, I have, no, 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 let me, let me rephrase that. I, I, might, I might maybe will be overcoming the world. He says, but be of good cheer because I have already overcome it. Now when he's talking about the world, he's talking about the world system and everything that happens in the world. So a storm, he said, I already overcome that. He said, a sickness, I already overcome that. He said, death, I already overcome that. 
So I want you to understand that in me you're supposed to have peace because I've already overcome everything. Everything that's going to come against you, I've already overcome it. That's an important word because you see the kingdom of God is an overcoming kingdom. We overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Everybody goes through tribulation. I want you to raise your hand today if you never went through tribulation. Anybody in here, you never went through tribulation. Boy, I see all of those hands all over the room. You look around, you see all those hands. Man, I tell you, boy, you got some people in here who never had tribulation in their life. Boy, I tell you. The people who've never had tribulation, you can find them in Sandlin. The insane asylum. That's the only people who are not, not going to raise their hand because they don't even know what's going on. But as long as you're here, you go through tribulation. Everybody goes through tribulation. Is somebody with me? The rich go through tribulation. The poor go through tribulation. The children go through tribulation. The adults go through tribulation. Sometimes you say, well, children don't have no problem. You know, children don't have no, don't have no problem. I mean, they really shouldn't have tribulation, but they find tribulation too. You know, you find children, you know, want to commit suicide. And I was like, How, why do you want to commit suicide? You're in pain or rent. You don't have no light bill. You live in free. You, you get the ride everywhere you go. Your parents take you around. What, what's your problem? But you see, Jesus already said it. Jesus said, look, if you're in this world, you're going to have tribulation. He didn't say any special group. So the children got tri tribulation. Everybody has to go through tribulation. The more money you get, the more problems you find the more problems follow you. Sometimes people say, well, you know, if I just had enough money. Well, there are people who had just enough money and they had just enough more problems added the more money that they got. So you, there's nothing that you can run to to have peace other than the one who said he will give you peace. He said, I'll give you peace. You can't get peace outside of him. Sometimes you have health tribulations. These are the tribulations. This world is going to test you. That's a guarantee. In this world, you're going to be tested. You're going to be stressed. You're going to be challenged. But there's always good news on the other side of it. Now, one of the things that Jesus said that I want you to remember is, there's a parable when he talked about it. He said that in this life, storms are going to come. He predicted that storms are going to come. He said, you're going to go through storms. He said you're going to go through tribulation, but he didn't only talk about tribulation, he talked specifically about, about storms. And he told you how to survive a storm. Now your storm may be different from someone else's storm. Sometimes you go through a mental storm. Your mind, I mean your mind is so uh, confused and, and you go through so much stress. Anybody ever been through a mental storm? Where you start thinking, you, you stress yourself out, that's a storm. You know, you say, well no, I just had some stress, that is a storm. It's a mental storm. And all of us, sometimes we go through that. Sometimes I remember, you know, going through situations in my life where I, I, I'm staying up at night because I'm thinking. You know, I mean, the, the, the problem is, the problem is, is bombarding my mind. That's a storm. So the, this, the, 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 the mental storm is coming against your mind and sometimes you have to find a way to survive. Because if you don't survive, you can end up with those people who don't have no problems. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Sometimes you can have an emotional storm. You know, you have a husband or your wife, or your wife leaves you, or, or, or somebody does something wrong to you, or, or you just go through stress. You know, you can have storms in life. You know, I, 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 um, I, I, the other day I, I, heard, I heard my wife talking, and I realized she's been going through a storm for a little while, and some of the older women in this church, I just get them to understand it now, you know. She said, man, I, I, I burn it up. So I said, what, what happened, you know? Why are you sweating? Going through a physical storm. Pastor Tina, I remember Pastor Tina said to sit in the front. She had to go sit in the back because the light caused her to heat up. That's a storm. And I'm just getting familiar with that storm now since my wife has gotten older. <laughs> And then some of us, we have physical storm. You have health challenges that come, come across your way. You know, I, I, I remember just about a year or more ago, uh, Pastor Tracy, everything was fine. And then one day he ended up in the hospital and they said, man, you got some serious, you, are, you have a storm. But he was able to make it through the storm. Amen?
There are some people who go into every kind of storm. All of the storms come one time. You know, you have the emotional, financial, physical, everything. All these storms come together. But I want you to check out this scripture in Matthew chapter 7, verse 24, where Jesus talks about how to survive a storm. It says this. It says, whoever has these things of mine and does them is like someone who is wise, who built his house on a rock. Jesus is explaining to the disciples how to get through storms. He said, let me tell you something. He said, whoever hears these things, in other words, if you hear my words and you do them, it's like someone who built his house on a rock. And then he begins to say, he says, rain descended. Now, Jesus didn't say, you built on a rock and so the rain is not coming. So don't get surprised when the rain comes. <laughs> When the rain comes, it's supposed to come. He says, who built his house on a rock, rain descended, floods came, winds blew. All of that happened this past couple of days. <laughs> the rain descended, the floods came, and the wind blew. All came at the same time. And sometimes the storms come in clusters. It is not just one thing. Sometimes you might have a flood one day. Sometimes you might have rain one day. Sometimes you might have wind one day. But sometimes everything comes together. And Jesus said, it doesn't matter what type of storm it is. He said, if you understand my words and you stand on my word, you will survive every storm. Somebody say hallelujah. It says, and the wind beat on it and it did not fall for it was founded on the rock. You got to be on the rock. Everybody say founded on the rock. You see, you have to understand that there are some sand people and there are rock people. You got to be a rock person. Any rock people in here today? He goes on to say in the, in, 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 the, in the parable, he says, he says, and then there was someone who was built on the sand. And then the winds came and the, wind, and, 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 and the, and the rain descended and everything blew again. It says the, house, the great was the fall of that house. And you know, there's some people in this world who we think that they are founded on the rock. We think they found it on the rock because they have money. But sometimes you see a great fall. You see, you see persons who we, who we expect that they're going to make it. We see them fall because they're not really on the rock. We think that they're rock people, but they are sand people. Whether you overcome and how you overcome in life, Jesus said it's based upon your foundation. What kind of foundation do you have? If you have a sand foundation, you're going to fall. If you have a rock foundation, you're going to stand. So the question I have for you today is, are you sand or rock? And you see, the storms of life will tell you who you really are. You see, you may, you, you may, you, you, you may give quotes like a rock person. You might have rock words. You know, bless, bless the Lord, hallelujah, I, I'm with Christ for life and all these kinds of things. And then the storm comes. And then we find that you weren't really rock, you were sand. Because you got washed away. So we, are, we need to know today whether you are sand people or rock people. Now I want to tell you something about sand. I want to show you the difference between sand and rock so you can understand who you are. First of all, sand consists of fine, movable particles. You see, the problem with sand is that sand is always moving. You ever, you ever walk in sand? When you walk in sand, the sand moves. And because it moves, it means that it can't stay one place, it can't hold you up. If the water comes, the sign will, will wash away. So sand consists of movable particles. Sand is really disintegrated rock. And you see, sand cannot hold you up because sand moves too much. You need some things that doesn't move. In life, you need some principles that come from the Word of God. That's why he said, hold on to these things. You see, there's some principles. Everything that he said is a principle. And when he says a principle, that's a rock. You can stand on that. Because principles don't move. When he says something, the Bible says, he speaks his word and it's a decree. A decree is not like a, an act of parliament. You see, an act of parliament, you have to get enough people to get her to vote on it. When there's a decree, the king says, this is the way it shall be, and that's the way it is. Amen? So we have signs that is disintegrated particles. Now, 
I want to tell you something about rock because you have to understand the different, there are different grades of rock. But to understand how rock forms, it can show you how to survive a storm. First of all, you have igneous rock. Now, what is igneous rock? Igneous rock is a fiery rock. So when you see volcanoes and you see all of the lava spewing up, spewing up, what happens is that when that stuff heats up and it ends up um, going over the mountain and it goes into water or it goes on land, when it cools, it becomes hard rock. Now, why is that important? You see, it becomes rock after it goes through fire. You see, you don't get rock without fire. And some of us, we want rock, but we don't want any fire. <laughs> it says, tiny grains of different minerals compress together in chemical reaction to form a bigger mass. So the magna, the, the, the fire, brings it together, and, and when, it, when it cools down, you can't move them apart anymore. You see, that's, 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 when, you are, that's when you are real rock. When you are real rock, you go through fire, and the fire doesn't cause you to fall apart. It causes you to stick together. And you see, you have these particles, and there's a chemical reaction. In all these rock formations, there's some chemical reaction. The second kind of rock is called sedimentary rock. Now, what is sedimentary rock? It's amazing that sedimentary rock consists of sand. Part of it is sand. Let me tell you what sedimentary rock is. It says, masses together with sand, clay, skeletons, and shells, and other particles. Can you imagine that? Sedimentary rock comes together from all of these different sources. And you see, sometimes in life, you, 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 know, you go through some things, and all kinds of things happen to you, and you have to pull everything together. And the pressure pulls everything together, so then you get, you, you get a chemical reaction that causes you to stick together where you can't be moved. And you see, the sedimentary rock, what happens is that it washes over the side of the mountain, and some of the sand gets there, some of the clay gets there, some of the shells there, the, 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 the skeletons, all of them come together, and what happens is that through a pressure process, they get stuck together. So as they lay on top of one another, there's a chemical that forms from the pressure that causes them to stick together, and they become a hard rock. And in life, there are two things that you go through. One of, one of them is fire. Fire is not easy, and fire is not good. But fire causes rock to form. And then the other thing that causes rock to form is pressure. Sometimes you go through pressure in life. Anybody in here, you've been through pressure. You know, sometimes you, 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 you go through some things, and boy, you, you, it's hard to hold it together. But you see, if you are rock, the more pressure you get, the more you stick together. But if you are sand, the more pressure you get, you fall apart. So you got to be rock. The third type of rock is metamorphic rock. These rocks are formed when minerals and rocks are changed underground by heat and pressure. I don't know if you understand that every kind of rock comes together through two, through two things, heat and pressure. That's why Jesus said to the disciples, he said, in this world you will have tribulation. He said, in this world you will start out as signs. He said, but when the tribulation comes, when the pressure comes, when all of these things come, you will become rock. Why? Because you are... You, you are holding on to my word. You see, God's word is the chemical reaction that causes the particles to stick together. So when all of the pieces in your life are getting messed up and broken up and everything, and you figure those pieces, they, you know, they can't come together, the pressure along with the chemical of the word brings the stuff together and you become rock. Do we have any rock people in here today? If you are rock people, I want my rock people to stand up. Any rock people in here today, stand up if you are rock people. Hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. You can have a seat. We are, we are, we are rock people in here today. You see, um, you don't want to, you, you don't want to go into the world under misconception. You see, if you go into the world in misconception, you will act like, you know, you're going to be alright without pressure. You're going to be alright without fire. That just somehow you're going to just make it through life. Don't, don't deceive yourself. When Jesus said, he, he, he says, Everybody goes to tribulation and realize that the tribulation is coming. Realize that the storm is coming. And here's one of the problems that we have in the world today. We get complacent to the point where we don't expect storms. I 
want you to understand something about the Bahamas. Okay? Don't act like, don't act surprised like we had a storm. We live in a storm zone. This is not the first hurricane, and it's not, it will not be the last hurricane. So, if the hurricanes are going to come anyhow, our job is to be prepared when they come. You have to listen to Jesus. Jesus said, in this world you're going to have tribulation, so get prepared for the next storm. And you see, preparation comes in several categories. You know, I, 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 I went through an interesting process in this storm. I don't like hurricanes. I said to my wife, uh, the day, a couple days before the hurricane, I said, baby, let's get tickets, let's get out of here. I'll come back and, and see whatever happened to the house, and I'll call the insurance, and then we move on. And then she said to me, she said, you know, but you're the pastor, you can't leave. <laughs> I say, I'm the pastor, I make sure everybody's secure, and then I... <laughs> and you know, while the storm was going on, we did all our preparation. And after I put up all my, my shelters, because I, 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 I was prepared, you know, I've been through enough storms, I'm not going to be, you're not, you're not going to find me last minute trying to find plywood. You know why? Because if you're trying to find plywood at the last minute, you ain't been listening to Jesus. If you listen to Jesus, you don't enter a storm unprepared. Some of y'all, you're on gas lines today. Let me tell you why you're on gas lines, because you were not prepared, you didn't listen to Jesus. You know what I did? You know what I did before the storm? I filled up my car, I filled up my wife's car, and uh, if we had another car that was working, I would have filled that up too. Because I understand that you got to prepare for storms. You see, sometimes storms come and then we're unprepared and we want to blame the storm. You can't blame the storm. Jesus already told you what to do. So I filled up, uh, you know, I, I protected everything. But let me tell you something. Sometimes some storms can come and they're a category higher than you expected. And so this storm came, and I saw, you know, when, when I first saw the, the report, I was like, oh man, this can be a breeze. You know, they said it's going to pass to the east of Nassau, and, and you know, it'll be 70 miles, and I said, man, 70 miles an hour, ain't that ain't a problem. Then they started saying, you know, well, it's going to be a Category 1. I said, well, that's all right, man. We've we, we been through, we, Bahamians, we know about Category 1. And they say, man, it's going to be a Category 2. I said, well, you know, Bahamians, we know about Category 2, too. Then they say, Category 3. I said, now, nah, hold on. Now. <laughs> I said, why you got to come to Nassau, man? I mean, God knows to dissipate, do something. And, you know, so I, I started to think. I said, now, I know I'm prepared for Category 1. I know I'm prepared for Category 2. I think I'm prepared for Category 3. And I wonder if I'm prepared for Category 4 or 5. So I went on the Internet and I started doing research. And you know what the research said? The research said, at Category 3, shingles will blow off. It says that Category 4, the plywood could blow off. It says that Category 5, the roof can blow off. So you have to know what to expect ahead of time. Now you want God to preserve you in spite of what the science tells you. You see, one of the things that you can't do, you have to remember that God created science. He created the, the, the reactions in the earth. Science is only a discovery of what God already did. So the science tells you that if a certain force of wind comes against your house, it tells you when it will blow. That's why it's important for you to know what to, what, know what to expect. Now you can pray and, and ask for supernatural against, uh, event, intervention against it, but you have to know what to expect. So I started reading and I began to realize, you know what? The shingles could, prob could, could possibly blow off and it's too late for me to get a new type of steel roof. So I said, well, you know, I decided to stay here. You know, my wife didn't listen to my advice and uh, we didn't get the ticket and get out. So I said, you know, we can, we can ride out the storm. And then I began to realize that, you know, and I thank God. I thank God because, you see, um, one of the things I learned years ago from, I, I think, I can't remember what hurricane it was, but I decided, you know what, I'm going to get a generator. If I don't buy anything else, I'm buying a generator. Because I remember there was one storm where after the storm, the power didn't come on for more than a week. And, you know, you don't have no generator, it's rough. So I got my automatic generator, and then so some of my family members, they realized that I have an automatic generator. So they decided that the party was at my house. Some of them didn't even call, they just say, anyway, uh, I'm here. 
And so we're going through the storm, man, and everything is looking good. You know, the first part of the storm, things look good. When the, when the wind first came, I was looking out the window. I saw a couple little singers flying off in the neighborhood. I said, oh, praise the Lord, man, we're going to make it. Then all of a sudden, I saw some stuff flying off. Then I saw a plywood come over my house, and I was like, where the plywood come from? <laughs> then the neighbor, the neighbor had three uh, parts of his roof blow off, and then I landed on a car. And as I was, I was standing there watching the storm in the window, and you know, I said, I said to myself, I said, you know what? I think I better get everybody downstairs. And so I went to my daughter. I woke up. And she said, Daddy, there's a problem. I said, no, there's no problem. I said, but I think we need to go downstairs. So she said, okay, okay, Daddy, um, and let me get my stuff together. And there was a, uh, my niece was there, and she had a, a newborn baby. And they were in the room there, and I said, yeah, let's go downstairs. And so I got everybody downstairs. And just after I got everybody downstairs, the roof collapsed, the ceiling collapsed. Right where the baby was, was laying down. And so I, I realized that, you see, some, see you, you need, you need uh, physical preparation, but you also need spiritual preparation. And so as I was watching the storm, God was talking to me, and he said, man, move them. It's coming. You know, sometimes we expect, we say, you know, God is going to, uh, um, you know, prevent it from, from falling. You know, in this case, it wasn't prevented from falling, but he prevented me from, from having more physical damage to, to, to life. You know, so I, and we, we went downstairs, you know, and then, the, but the roof, all of the water started coming through the roof. I mean, buckets of water. But the good thing was, you know, the, my, 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 um, my family who was freeloading off of me for the hurricane, <laughs> they came in so handy. You know, I have a brother who does construction. Well, actually, all my brothers do construction. They do everything. And uh, when they came there, they, they came over the plan. So, you know, all the water is coming through the roof. They said, okay, you get the top, you put a hole in the middle of the top, you let all the water come in one area, get down, you go in the bucket, and then you take the bucket and you put it in, in the toilet and so you, you, you keep your room, you know, fairly good. Of course, that worked for a while until it was too much. But... I thank God for them being there because one of the problems I had is that I had had a shoulder injury prior to the storm. So there were a lot of things that I would have wanted to do I couldn't do. But thank God that they were there. Amen. You see, the thing about rock is this. Rock is solid and unmovable. You know, if you go in the sand, if you take, if you take a hammer and you hit the sand, the sand starts scattering. And you see, there's some people in the world like that, some sand people. When they get hit, they start scattering. And then you have rock people. And you see, rock is at different levels. You see, you have rock people and you, say, you need to be rock. But there are some people who are more rock than others. You have some rock, when you hit the rock, it splits. It chips off. It doesn't fall apart. It just chips off. But then you have some rock, when you hit that, the thing hits you back. And that kind of rock has gone through a special process. There's a special formula for that kind of rock. You ever heard of concrete before? You see, concrete is made from some of these same particles. It's made from sand and clay and all of that. But then there's a special chemical process that gets together that causes it to stick. And it sticks so hard, it's just really, really hard to move it. And you see, in, in life, we need to make sure that we become not just rock, let's become concrete. Solid and unmovable. It takes a lot to crack concrete. That's why concrete structures can be there forever. In the Bahamas, when they created the building code, they say, no, you can't have wood. You know why? Wood is not strong enough. We need rock. That's why your life can't be wood. You can't be sand. You got to be rock. We are supposed to be people of the rock. Any of my rock people raise their hand. We got to be people of the rock. And let me tell you something. Rock people are hard people. And when you look in the Bible, the Bible is full of rock people. Sometimes we think that, you know, people in the Bible had it easy. But I want to show you some scriptures in a moment. So the question for you today is, are you a sand person or a rock person? That's the question that you have to ask yourself. Are you sand or rock? Or are you steel? Is this steel and concrete comes together? 
I say we are not only rock, but we are steel. And here's the thing about storms. Storms are not always bad. Now, storms can be bad, but they don't always have to be bad. Someone mentioned it today. Sometimes a storm can cause an upgrade in your life. You know, I was thinking about all the damage in my house, and then after I started I was thinking about all the damage, I said, you know, I needed to upgrade that. Anybody else know what I'm talking about? I, 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 had, I have to admit, I had a private prayer. I said, Lord, let that blow off too. <laughs> Storms are not always bad. Because storms actually clear out things. And somebody who mentioned it this morning, storms clear out some things and cause some things to be moved and shifted and stuff like that. Sometimes you got to work with the storm. You don't want the storm to hurt you, but sometimes the storm can produce a result that is, that is to your benefit. And you see, the Bible says God works all things together for our good. So even some of the bad things, He still turned it into good. Amen? And you see, the, the thing about storms is that storms affect you to the point where they can lead you to an upgrade. A storm can actually upgrade you. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something about, about storms. Because, you see, Jesus knew all of these things. And that's why he talked to the disciples. He said, you can have peace. You see, during, when, when a storm comes, there are some people that businesses get upgraded there's some guys that I met over the last couple of days. They say, man, this, this more, all the work I have for the year. I, I mean, I hadn't had this much work this year. So, you know, the storm may negatively impact someone and then be and beneficially impact someone else. The fellows who are selling gas and the hardware stores, they're happy today. they blessed. They may help us get through the rest of the, <laughs> of the week. So a storm can lead you to an upgrade. And one of the things that I want us to do as a church, and that's why we, we put together these forms. We have some forms. What we want to do, you see, the scripture for this church that I want you to remember is the scripture that, that, that is our, one of our guiding principles is all things common in the book of Acts. Because when you saw that scripture in the book of Acts, that was God's model. So if you have today, I want you to give to the people that don't have. Put right on your seed, get one of the seed, uh, the, the seed envelopes. We're going to use the storehouse ministry to help people to get food, building supplies, whatever it is. The people who lost, because some, some of our members, their houses are condemned. Some of us, we have some money. So all we want you to do is to give to those who don't have. That's, that's all we're asking. And that's just following a biblical principle. So we have some forms out in the foyer. And it, the forms tell you, uh, uh, you know, it, it allows you to list your categories. So for example, um, the form says this. It says, put your name and other information. And then, do you need food? Do you need housing? Do you need building supplies? Do you need other? And so you write down your needs. Then we have another form for those who have. You see, in order for things to, to get to you, they have to come from someone else. And sometimes the people who have things are not connected to the people who don't have things. So the people who don't have, they go, their, their need goes unsupplied simply because of a lack of information. So what we want to do as a ministry is we want to bring the information together. Because we have some business people who can benefit. They won't charge you the regular rate. They'll give you a reduced rate. And some of them may even do it for free. So the business people, whatever you can provide, we want, to, we want it on this list. So then we will match the two lists together. And we're going to have some forms that you fill out, and we have a group that's going to oversee it so that we can all um, benefit together. Because remember this, everything for earth is in earth. All it has to do is move around. Everything that we need is already here. The problem is that it's when it's not circulating and it's when it's not, when it's not moving to the right location. Are you with me? So now I want to show you some things from the Bible that, that's going to blow your mind. Things are not easy in this world. It's easy with God, but in order for, for you to experience an easy life, you have to be with God. And in order to be with God, you have to leave here. So as long as you're here, it's not going to be easy. Just get that through your head. Amen? Jesus said this. He said, seek first the kingdom, and all these things will be added unto you. So he's telling you that things are a secondary priority. Now, your house is important. Let me tell you something. As Pastor Stephen said this morning, it doesn't feel good to lose your house. 
I had to call Pastor Pepe. I had, I had called Pastor Pepe. I said, hey, Pastor Pepe, what should I do? Pastor Pepe said, get that rug out of your house because mold is going to form in it and it's going to make you sick. And so I realized that I had to start clearing out. And as I started clearing out and the ceiling came down and all that kind of stuff, that was not nice. You don't want to be in a house that smells, you know, like water all over the place and, and, and mold and all that kind of stuff. And your possessions are important, man. You know, you, 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 you are comfortable in your house. Everything is good. And, and, and all of a sudden it gets messed up. That's not a good feeling. So we don't minimize that. But Jesus said those are things. He said there's something more important than things. He said the kingdom first. Everybody say kingdom first. Kingdom first, things after. I want you to remember that principle. Kingdom first and then things after. The kingdom will restore things. But things cannot bring the kingdom. Let me say that again. The kingdom will restore things and bring things to you. But things can't bring the kingdom. That's why Jesus said to the man, he said, look, he said, you know, it's harder for a rich man to get through an eye of a needle than, than to enter the kingdom of God. Because you see, the rich man is thinking that his things can bring him the kingdom. But things can't bring you the kingdom. The kingdom can bring you things. Jesus said, you will have tribulation, but he said, don't panic. And that's important. It's important for us not to panic. It's important for us to cheer up. It's important for us to be of good spirits regardless of what's going on. You see, you can't let a storm mess up your spirit. Because your spirit is untouchable by wind. You know, some of us, we act like the, 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 the breeze or the rain can, can actually touch our spirit. The, the, the breeze and the rain can touch things that can't really touch you unless you allow it. Are you with me? Now I want to go to the Hall of Fame in the Bible because the Hall of Fame in the Bible is a serious thing. Now when you're in, when you're in sports you, you, or music, your desire is to get into the Hall of Fame. But to get to the Hall of Fame, you have to go through some things. And you have to accomplish some things. When we look in the Bible, the Bible says this. It's Jesus said this. Jesus said, The kingdom of heaven suffers violence and the violence taken by force. So it's telling us that there's some violent opposition against us. So we have to become violent to take it back. We have to take back what's ours by violence. And so there's a collision process. There's some, there's some challenges. And this is Hebrews. It says, These all died in faith, not having received the promise. It's talking about some of the forefathers. It's talking about, you know, Moses and, 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 and Joseph and, and all these people. It says they went through all kinds of things. And some of them never saw the promise. But you see, they were such rock people, they didn't have to see the promise to remain in the kingdom. It says, these all having died in faith, not having received the promise, but having seen them afar off. So they only saw it for afar off. We actually get a closer view of the promise. Because the new covenant is the real, it's the new promise. You see the old covenant, you saw it afar off. The new covenant, you see it up close. Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they all saw it afar off. We see it up close because we can come to Jesus for ourselves. It says, they saw them afar off. They embraced and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. For those who say such things declare plainly that they seek a homeland. And truly if they had called to mind that country from which they had come out, they would have had opportunity to return. But now they desire a better, that is, a heavenly country. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for He has prepared a city for them. The faith of the patriarchs, it says, by faith, Abraham was tested. He offered up Isaac. And it says, and he who had received the promises offered up his only begotten son, of whom it was said, in Isaac your seed shall be called, concluding that God was able to raise him up. So Abraham was a rock person. He didn't even know if his child was going to live. But he said, you know what? I believe in the kingdom. And because I believe in the kingdom, I'm prepared to sacrifice. And says, concluding that God was able to raise him up, even from the dead, from which he had already received him in a figure to his sense. By faith, Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau concerning, concerning things to come. By faith, Jacob, when he was dying, blessed each of his sons, each of the sons of Joseph, and worship, leaning on the top of his staff. 
By faith, Joseph, when he was dying, made mention of the departure of the children of Israel and gave instruction concerning his bones. You see, all these people had the kingdom perspective. They knew what was ahead. They didn't care what was going on around with them. They didn't care. They actually received it. And sometimes you got to be a, when you are a rock person, even if you don't see it, you, you, you're still good. Are you with me? Any rock people in this place today? It says, the faith of Moses, by faith Moses, when he was born, was hidden three months by his parents. Let me tell you something. All of these people that we speak about in the Bible, and we say, oh, great people, Moses, they went through some stress. They went through some storms. They went through some trials. You know what it is? You a little baby, and you, 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 they, they putting you in the water to, to, to go up the river. That's a serious thing. It says, hidden for three months. They had to hide him for three months because he was, he was scheduled for death. It says, because they saw he was a beautiful child, and they were not afraid of the king's command. He has rock people. It says, by faith, Moses, when he became of age, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Moses had a, I mean, Moses had a great privilege. He was living in the castle. And if you understand the castle in those days, the castle was a well-furnished place. The castle had all the wine. It had the Hennessy. It had everything that you want. They, they probably even had some 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 uh, um, sense Amelia or whatever 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 the king whatever you want the king because he's not a kingdom he's not from the kingdom of God he, they provide it and then to top it off after all these provisions it says choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God I want you to understand something today you know we believe that the kingdom of God provides for us we believe that the kingdom of God causes us to be blessed. But I want you to know, if you go to the Hall of Fame in the Bible, you will find some people who chose affliction rather than blessing because of the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God was that important. Because they realized that the blessing, what they thought was a blessing, wasn't really a blessing. And the kingdom was more of a blessing. So they chose the kingdom rather than what appeared to be a blessing. Are you with me? It says, choosing to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the passing pleasures of sin. The Bible identifies and says the passing pleasures of sin. Sin comes to pass. And it passes quickly. And sometimes it passes worse than anything else you ever experienced in your life. Because sometimes, you know, you enjoy the pleasures of sin and you think, oh, this is going to last forever. And the devil never lets anything good last forever. It says, esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt. For he looked to the reward. By faith he forsook Egypt, not bearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. I want you to notice that it says, seeing him who is invisible. We are a part of an invisible kingdom. It's not a visible kingdom. But if you can see the invisible, it can cause the invisible to become visible. And when it becomes visible, it becomes tangible. It says, by faith he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of blood, lest he who destroyed the firstborn to touch them. By faith they passed through the Red Sea as dry land, whereas the Egyptians attempting to do so were drowned. By faith the walls of Jericho fell down after they were encircled for seven days. By faith the harlot Rahab did not perish with those who did not believe. And when she had received the spies with peace. I want you to notice something. The people in the Bible that we call heroes, they didn't have it easy. Are you with me? You see, when you when you when you look at the at the at the Bible, you know you have to get you have to get out of your mind the easy part because the easy part is not there. And if you read the Bible correctly, you will see that it's not easy. And so you have to understand that storms come, difficulties come, but the kingdom of God is so powerful it can overcome every difficulty. Verse thirty-two says, "And what shall what and what more shall I say?" For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon and Barak and Samson and Jephthah, also of David and Samuel and the prophets, who through faith subdued kingdoms, worked righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the violence of the fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, became valiant in battle, and turned to flight the armies of the aliens. You see, the kingdom of God caused these people to be rock people. And so whatever storm came their way, they were able to survive. That's why their testimonies are in the book. Are you a rock person? Because if you're not a rock person, you can't give the type of testimony. You know what your testimony will be? You know, I was working with the kingdom of God, but when the problems came, I couldn't take it. And guess what? There's no better solution. You think, well, you know, let me go with the devil. 
You know, you understand how the devil works? The devil takes the people who are working for him and he kills them. So don't think that you're going to get any refuge by, by aligning with the devil. He's going to make your life worse. It says, women received their dead to life again. Others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they may obtain a better resurrection. Still others had trials, tri trial of mockings and scourging, yes, yeah, and chains and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were torn in two, they were tempted, they were slain by the sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. The world wasn't worthy of these people. These were some rock people. These were some hard people. They didn't care what was going on. You know, some of the disciples, they said they cut their head off. And they said, man, you can cut my head off because you can't kill the kingdom. The kingdom of God is within me. They wandered in deserts and mountains and dens and caves of the earth. And all these having obtained a testimony through faith did not receive the promise. God having provided something better for us. Everybody say better for us. So they went through all of this so that our lives can be better. It says that they should not be made perfect apart from us. I want you to know that the Bible says, He that overcomes will stand. You know, so they, say, they say it ain't over till the fat lady sings. You have to remember, never let the fat lady grab the microphone on your life. If you see the fat lady get up, you say, Fat lady, you ain't singing today. <laughs> I got on my knees and prayed, give me this microphone, leave this concert alone. The chosen have arrived and come to the dome. You see, you have to do what you need to do and, re and let God do the rest. You see, in life, you got all kinds of things coming against you. Sometimes you got the media coming against you. Sometimes you have critics coming against you. Let me tell you something. There, there's, a, there's, a, there's, there's critic storms that comes in your life. You ever, have you ever had one of those critic storms? Let me tell you something, man. You know, before I became a Christian, I thought that when you become a Christian, boy, everybody, I really thought everybody, anybody else thought that? You thought that there were good people in the kingdom of God, that everybody was perfect. Anybody you thought that? I was like, man, I'm a Christian now. Everything is cool. Man, I found that some of the Christian people, they would lie on you. They tell man. I heard some things about me that I that 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 um, you know. Uh, I, even the, only the devil could have made some of those things up. But it came from people in the kingdom of God. You understand what I'm saying? So you got to be prepared for all kinds of storms. Sometimes you got family storms. Sometimes you think, well, you know, my family is with me. Sometimes your family ain't with you. In life, you got every kind of storm. Sometimes you have you have a husband storm. You know, everything is going on all fine, and then your husband, one of the day, he just run off with a woman. And the thing about it is, most of the time, the husband running off with an ugly woman. And taking your money and paying the ugly woman. <laughs> you know, I, I met a young lady one time, she came for me to, for counseling, and she said, she said, Pastor Dave, she said, you know, I could understand if the woman did look good. She said, but this was one scrubby girl from the ghetto. And say he's taking all the money and giving to her. And, and here I am, I'm a beautiful woman. Um, everything he needs is right here. But you see, that's how the devil deceives people. And sometimes you got a family storm. Don't raise your hand if that's you've been through that. But you understand what I'm saying? It can come. And then you have friends. Sometimes your friends can create a storm around you. Uh, but you, you have to ignore all of that. Because when you rock people, you go to... The fire, you go through the flood, you go through the wind, you go through the rain, and you still come out better than before. Amen? I want to close with this example. Because you see, the kingdom of God was presented to us after Jesus. The person who gave us the greatest glimpse of the kingdom of God was the Apostle Paul. Because he wrote most of the books in the New Testament, and the New Testament is the New Covenant. And when we think of the Apostle Paul, we think of him, man, this is a great hero. And he was a great hero. But let me show you his journey to the Hall of Fame. Because he achieved the Hall of Fame. Let me show you his journey. You see, um, when it talks about the Apostle Paul in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 3 through 9, it says this. It says, we put no stumbling block in anyone's path. Apostle Paul is saying, let me, let me, let me, let me clear some things to you. He said, in case you are thinking that we're coming at you wrong, let me, let me get this story straight so you can understand. 
He said, so that our ministry will not be discredited. He said, you know, we're coming to you straight. We ain't giving you, we ain't giving you no, no, no um, funny business. We're going to give it to you straight. He says, rather as servants of God, we commend ourselves in every way. Sometimes you have to commend yourself because people don't know how to commend you. The Apostle Paul was slaving for the kingdom of God and some people were talking bad about him. So when people talk bad about you, don't, don't, don't get upset, you know. Because Jesus said these people were coming. He says, we commend ourselves. And then he began to list what he went through. This is a rock person. This is, this is, the, the, this is the, the second biggest rock in the Bible. It says, Jesus is the real rock. This guy was a rock too. He, this is a hard dude. And you, you know, you don't come out in this. It says, in great endurance, in troubles, in hardship, in distress, in beatings, in imprisonments, in riots, in hard work, sleepless nights, in hunger, purity, understanding, in the spirit of sincere love, in truthful speech, and in the power of God, with weapons of righteousness in the right hand and in the left, through glory and dishonor, bad report and good report, genuine yet regarded as apostles, known yet regarded as unknown, dying yet we live, beaten and yet not killed, sorrowful yet always rejoicing, poor yet making many rich. Paul said, man, I don't care what's coming. He said, I don't care what direction the storm is coming from, I'm ready. He said, you could beat me, stone me, shipwreck me, whatever it is, because I'm a rock person. Do we have any rock persons in here today? You see, you got to be a rock person. Because the Bible, Jesus said, on this rock I will build my church. So rock is an important component of the kingdom of God. We have to understand the importance of rock. you got to be a rock person. You know what Paul said to them? They, they said to Paul, you know these people, let me tell you how wicked these people were. These the, the kingdom people now. These people in the church. The people in the church, Paul is going to shipwreck, going through all kinds of things to get to, to, get, to, to get to them, to minister to them. And they don't want to pay to do it. And some of y'all are saying, boy, they cool. Well, ain't nothing changed, you know. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know, now there's some, there's some preachers, they go, they, 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 I guess they look at the members, they say, man, they ain't going to pay us, so we can take the money. But you see, um, <laughs> the real rock people, don't worry about all of that. Paul, the apostle Paul said, man, if you pay me, that's okay. If you don't pay me, I work with my hands. So Paul actually used to build tents to make money so that he could preach the gospel to these people. These are some ungrateful people. Are you with me? That's a rock person. Because he could have said, you know what? I, I'm doing all of this stuff for these people. Why do I have to do this, man? I have a, 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 a talent for a business. Let me go into my business. Let them go perish. You know what I mean? I mean, sometimes uh, I understand how he felt. He said, man, if you don't pay me, I work with my hands. But he was a rock person. So he said, you know, if you don't pay me, I'm going to minister because I understand the kingdom of God. If you pay me, I will minister because I understand the kingdom of God. So what, whether you pay me or not, that's irrelevant because I'm not working for you. And guess what? You know those scriptures that we quote, where we talk about, you know, I can do all things through Christ? You need to read the verses before. Because you need to understand what he went through before he gets to that verse. He said, he says, I can do all things through Christ. He said, I know how to abase and I know how to abound. He said, I've suffered lack and I've had plenty. He said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. He didn't just say that in a vacuum. He said, man, I know how to go through every situation. When I'm, you know, there, there are times when I had, there are times when I didn't have. And that's the attitude that you have. If you're going to be a rock person, you can't just be, I'm okay because I'm blessed today. With, with, with things. You have to have the spirit of an overcomer. <clears throat> you have to be the same way when you broke as when you were rich. And that's why one of the things that the Bible says, you know, one of the things that the Bible says, is it says, when you have food and clothes, be content. That's what the Apostle Paul said. Now, it doesn't mean to be complacent. But you see, if you have food and clothes, if you have the basics of life, you good. Everything else after that is a bonus. And there's nothing wrong with bonuses. And accumulate all the bonuses you can, you can get in life. But guess what? If you don't have the bonuses, you've got life. 
And you are the kingdom of God, and the kingdom of God cannot be taken away from you. And the kingdom of God is so valuable, it transcends things. You see, there are people in the world with all kinds of things, and they're going crazy. There are people in the world with all kinds of things, they can't get healthy. And then there are other people in the world, we look up and we say, they don't have anything, but these people are so happy, they got life, and, and, and they got joy, and they got peace of mind. You know, there's some old ladies who in the church, they come to the church and they pray every week. And some, you know, there's some ladies who come here to the church, one lady in particular, she doesn't even have a car. She gets the bus, walk here, come here at 6 o'clock in the morning to pray. And people may look at her and say, oh, she is so poor. Let me tell you how rich she is, man. She is so rich, she ain't worrying about whether she has a car or not. She has the kingdom on the inside of us, so anything else, she, she understands that whatever comes is a bonus. You know, and we need to understand that there, there are people in this world who are not consumed by things. So don't get consumed by things. Things accessorize your life. They're not the essence of life. Not that we don't want things. Things are good because things make life comfortable. The Bible reminds us that we are overcomers. The Bible talks about uh, we can do all things through Christ. So we have to remember today that we are overcomers. And our overcomer, me, overcoming means this. It means to get the better of, to surmount, to overwhelm, to gain superiority over, to win, to conquer. That's who we are. We are rock people. We are overcomers. You see, uh, the, 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 the overcomers, they cannot be defeated. Because in order to defeat them, you have to be stronger than death. And Jesus already defeated death. And so if you can't defeat them with death, then they are really undefeated people. When, when you look, when you, if you want to see a real rock person, you have to look at Jesus. Did Jesus have an easy life? Let me tell you something. Jesus went through nails. He went through people spitting on him. He went through people um, putting thorns on his head. People criticizing him every day. He went through all of that and he still came out as rock. All of the pressures brought him together. He, he's our example. We have to learn from him. You see, if anybody who was supposed to have it easy in life was supposed to be Jesus. But guess what? Jesus knew that he was coming into a hostile environment. He said, I have already overcome this world. I know what's here. And when he says that, that's why he said, listen to my saying. In other words, I came here, I understand the system, I understand what's here, I understand who controls it. I already overcome it, so just watch me and follow me. Watch me go through the nails. Watch me go through the spitting. Watch me go through the criticism. And I come out as rock. The lion from Zion hard like I am. <laughs> Sometimes you got to be reminded that you're an overcomer. Because when storms come, sometimes we kind of, our confidence gets shaken. But I want you to know today that this storm, whether it's Katrina, it's Sunday, it's Matthew, somebody, I saw something on the internet the other day, it says, say, uh, say, Mark, Luke, and John, we want you to get your boy Matthew because he got straight off. <laughs> In the wrong place. Amen? Let's stand together on our feet. Here's something that I want you to remember. In life, do not fear Goliath. You know why? Because Goliath is a part of your promotion. If Goliath didn't come along, David would be a shepherd. But when Goliath came along, he became a king. So there's some storms that are coming against you. You have to realize that, hey, this storm, it looks rough for me and it's causing some problems, but this is a part of my upgrade. This is a part of my promotion. Amen? We have to have an appreciation that God has good plans for us regardless of what bad happens. And you see, sometimes people, people, people ask me a lot of questions. They say, well, if God is so good, why did all these things happen? It's really simple, you know. It's not complicated. People keep complicating it. The truth of the matter is, Jesus said it over and over again. He said, this world is a hostile environment. It's controlled by the devil. We keep thinking that God is doing this, God is doing that. This is a hostile environment. He said, I have overcome the environment through the kingdom of God. So that's why you need the kingdom of God. Instead of everybody trying to go around and blame God. Well, why God do this? Why God do that? God, he already tell us all of these things are here. And he already said, tribute storms, all these things are coming. So when they come, don't get surprised. Just become rock. 
Let the fire cause rock. Let the winds cause rock. Let the floods cause rock. We are rock people. Any rock people in the house today? Tell the person next to you, say, I am a rock person. Say, I'm hard like iron from Zion. You can't be a weak person. Okay, we, we have to be rock people. We have to be people who could go through anything and still come out. You see, if the stuff in life can shake us, then what do we have that's different from the people in the world? What separates us is the fact that we are rock people. That's why the Bible says neither death, nor life, nor principality. Let me tell you something. So somebody said to me, they said, man, you all went through a category 4 storm. I said, I said, let me tell you something. Two years ago, we went through a category 10 storm. And we still stand it. So category 4 don't face us anymore. Category 5 that don't face us. We already been through the press and we are rock people. We're going to keep standing. Somebody say hallelujah.